Hi everyone, I'm Miss Richards and some of you may know me, I'm one of three history teachers here at David Newport Academy and I'm going to be telling you some more information about um, history and the GCSE that we provide and hopefully that's going to encourage you all to be picking it as one of your GCSEs. Okay, so why should we pick GCSE history? Well, no matter what it is that you're interested in, whether it be conflict, early modern history or more modern history, there is something hopefully with our GCSE that, that would interest you and that is going to pique your interest. So hopefully, no matter it is what you've enjoyed over the past three years here, there will be something that picks your interest. Not only is it, is it a GCSE that is going to help you with specific key dates, eras, and societies, not only in our history in Britain, but our world history. It's also going to help you learn a variety of skills that are going to be beneficial for your future. Um, it's going to help with if you're thinking about going to do your A-levels or whether you're going to university or even if you are going straight into a job. GCSE history um, will provide you with those skills to help you benefit as much as possible. It'll help you with your written skills so that all these skills are super transferable into other aspects of life. It's going to help with your communication and your writing skills. It's going to help you be able to construct an argument. It'll help you be able to look at a picture, understand both points of view, the positives and the negatives, the pros and the cons to any side of an, of an argument, and then be able to come to your own opinion. It'll help you verbalise and be able to write that down. It's going to help you with your research and your problem solving skills, um, which is going to be, again, very beneficial if you're choosing to go to university in the future, or even if even in your chosen career, it'll be very beneficial. It's going to help with your investigation and your problem solving skills and your analytical and interpretation skills. So at the minute in year nine, we are looking at a lot of sources and interpretations. We're analysing them together. These are the key skills that are going to help you not only in year 10 and year 11, but they're going to help you further in life. OK, so the paper that we are going to be studying is AQA, that's our exam board, and you will be assessed by two written exams, paper one and paper two, each are two hours each. The, um, the whole course is split into four elements, and we've got a, a period study, a thematic study, a wider world depth study and a British depth study. That includes a historic environment, and that is our Elizabethan England um, topic. And that is where we are going to study a different location in depth, and that is going to help us in our exam and be needed for our exam. We've then got Britain, Health and the People, that is also on paper two, and that is our thematic study. So thematic means different themes, so as we are going through the, through the course and looking at the different aspects of Britain um, and the health of the people, um, we will study different themes. We've then got our one our period study, which is the America 1920 to 1973, opportunity and equality. And that is a very, a very short, it's just over 50 years. And we, that is really important because we're looking at key dates of opportunities and inequalities of people um, in America, how they made their fortune, how it was unequal, and how only certain people could access that opportunity within America. And then our final one is our wider world depth study, and that is conflict and tension, 1918 to 1939. And that is in between World War One and World War II, and how the and how the wider world sort of and the international community um dealt with the aftermath of World War One and the build up to World War Two. So currently in year nine we are studying World War One, Rise of Dictators and World War Two. Hopefully this is going to give us some insight, some foundational layer blocks um, to help us with um our conflict and tension paper um, if you choose to take GCSE history. So they are both studied over two papers um, and they're two hours each, we tend to say it was all written, so it's about six sides of A4 paper in each exam. Um, it is heavily written, um, but there is lots of different things for us to study.
So then, America, 1920 to 1973. This period is all about opportunity and equality. Inequality. And we're going to look at the development of the United States and how after World War I, they um, developed and how some people experienced mass amounts of change, how some people suffered from um, with inequality and how some people had more opportunities. There's plenty of opportunities for immigrants to move into America during this period of time and a wide variety of immigrants across the globe managed to make that journey. However, there was lots of inequality across races and the class divide. There was also turbulence in terms of how long those people could stay in America for and what their lives would be like. So, um, America is split into a variety of different parts and in part one we've got the American people and the boom. Now this is an American, um, an American economic boom. People had more money than they ever had before. Um, there was new inventions like the car, the Hoover, um, people were starting to buy more than they had ever had before. They had new inventions and new equipment to help them out in the house than they had ever before. People then also started to invest on the stock market um, and they were able to make their fortunes. We then go to part two, which is the bust. And as you can guess, that means that people began to lose all that money they had in the boom. There was a depression and many people lost their money due to the Wall Street crash and the impact of um, World War II. We're going to look at them trying to get the economy back going again. As we can see there, there is a picture of people queuing outside because they are unemployed and the majority, a lot of people during this period of time became homeless. We've then got post-war America and that is our part three and that is where American society were trying to give their children things that they had never had before. We have got post-war America and American economy, racial tensions and developments in the civil rights campaign. So there's a lot of tension and inequality for African Americans during this period in time. We're going to look at race and class and, and the rise of this person, which is Martin Luther King Jr. So then, conflict and tension, the interwar years, 1918 to 1939. We are going to be looking at um, what sort of happened within the, the world between World War I and World War II. So we're not going to be looking at the wars directly themselves, that's what, pretty much what we're doing currently in year nine, but we are going to be looking at the policies of the Treaty of Versailles and the League of Nations and how those things um, failed. We're going to be looking at the problems in that, that occurred between the both the wars and what led to the rise of Hitler and how he, abled, he, how he was able to make that rise within the ranks. We're also going to look at why and how the international community were unable to stop Hitler and Hitler becoming to, being able to rise and ultimately um, start World War II. So in part one, we're going to look at the peacemaking, so we're going to look at the Treaty of Versailles, the impact of that treaty and the wider settlement. Then in part two, we're going to look at the League of Nations and the international peace. So look at the League of Nations, the diplomacy outside of the League, and then ultimately the collapse of the League. Then in part three, we're going to be looking at the origins and the outbreak of the Second World War. So how tension started to rise and how that began to escalate, ultimately leading in the outbreak of the war. OK, so our third topic then is Britain, health and the people. So many people might know this topic as medicine through time, as that's what it used to be called. But it is a thematic study where we're going to gain a detailed understanding of how medicine and public health has evolved in Britain over the course of the centuries. So we're going to start off with part one, where we're going to look at medieval medicine and how medicine sort of stands still and the medicine in the Middle Ages and public health of people within that period of time. We then go on to part two, 
where we look at the Renaissance and how um, the impact of medicine sort of has changed. And we've all studied the Renaissance in year eight. So again, that's laying some foundations of knowledge to help us when we get into our GCSEs. And that is gonna help us understand how we dealt with diseases and how we started to prevent some diseases. Part three then, is our revolution of medicine, especially within the 20th century, and how things started to change. There was revolutions within surgery and improvements in our public health. And then finally, part four is our modern medicine. And that is helping us understand how there's been a modern treatment of um, disease and how, especially how the impact of war and technology helped um, surgery and how these things have progressed. And then we're going to look at modern public health of today. So as you can see, there is, um, we look at lots of different things, but you can see a gradual how medicine is going to have changed and hopefully improve and hopefully we'll find it very very interesting so our last one that we are going to be studying is elizabethan england from 1568 to 1603 and that helps us um, it's a very deep depth topic and it helps us look at the last 35 years of elizabeth the first reign okay and it is our most local study and um, as there are lots of elizabethan country houses that are surrounding us in derbyshire so in our part one then we have got elizabethan court and parliament that sort of looks at elizabethan's life and the difficulties that she had as a female ruler in our part two it is life in elizabeth elizabethan england and we look at how poor the actual poor were and despite it being a golden age that wasn't actually the case for everybody and not everybody prospered. Then we're gonna look at how English sailors sailed to South America to rob them of and steal and raid from their gold. In part three, we look at the troubles at home and abroad. So we look at religious matters, Mary Queen of Scots, which again, we have studied in year eight and how she was imprisoned and especially in, in places local to us here in Derbyshire and how she had a conflict with Spain. Then finally, we are going to look at a historic environment and that is a place that, um, a place or a building that we can look at and we look at the, the function, the structure and the location of the historic site, how that site reflects the attitudes, beliefs and social structure of Elizabethan society. And each year it is somewhere completely different um, and new and that's good. what we study will, and look at will help us in our exam. So our uh, last thing then is um, looking at potential future careers and what you can sort of achieve with by studying um, history, whether it be at GCSE, A level or, or even further. So you can go into journalism. Um, it's a very popular one because we are constantly practicing our writing skills and how to write arguments. Law, especially, we argue so much, we probably argue more than what lawyers would of what we believe is right and what we don't believe using the evidence that we are we are looking at. We've got business and politics, archaeology, paleontology, marketing, that's a very increasing market at the minute. A lot of people can be, are finding opportunities to go into marketing jobs and again, it is something that is um, very beneficial to have on your CV because again, we are learning so many skills that employers want. And then finally, teaching, if you're interested in teaching, history of course is a brilliant subject to go into. Um, studying history, whether it's um, for one of these careers that you can see in front of you or whether it is for any other career, it is an excellent, it is an excellent subject to have a GCSE in. As I said earlier, you are learning so many skills that are transferable in the future. If you need any more information or have any questions after watching this video, please feel free to email me, me Ms. Clark or Ms. Naylor, or you can come and see one of us um, alternatively. Thank you.